So I understand that overall 0% is great, but there are some areas where you have to take down budget and some areas do this. So overall, 0 is really good. The important picture is really the detail. So my question is, is the information, like the detail information on the increase or decrease in the of income, the sources of the funds? Or can I, can I get that information somewhere? Or who else? Yeah, you can get, I mean, we have. A breakdown line by line with a little bit more detail than what would fit in this brochure. Okay. Can we, is that on our next slide? Yeah. The, the actual. No, it was a working document. Um, I don't know that we put that on the website. I think we just put the finished budget on the website. Um, yeah, it's just the finished budget. Um, I know in past years there was a working document that gave an explanation on the line by line, but I don't know that we did that this year. Do you have um, specific concerns just the areas? Well, my concern is again, you need a public number. Uh, again, repeating myself, this can be a this was a typical year or prior, and I don't think that I understand the zero percent of the low budget is good. Some kind of things for the next year is when things become the normal. 
where, let's say, um, I understand that if you're up, upgrading that stuff is very pricey and everything, but the items that were increased substantially, let's say in five years, they will stay the same. But then other items will flow up. So we may catch up to that red line where we used to be, and then the prices will go up above the line, above our money margin line. So I need to, to know like why specifically uh, some of the items jump so much, whereas others to you know to sum up to the same zero percent or all the time see less. Than. Well, the, the, the computer hardware, as Sheila said, there was a one-time cost for a telephone upgrade we're anticipating next year. Our phone system is very antiquated. So that line, you're seeing that big jump, yep. the 4825, that would be just next year. After that, it would be just, you know, whatever our normal hardware. I completely understand that I agree with you, but again, okay. it says computer hardware, right? Mm -hmm. So to me, next year or the year after, the price stays the same, and, and I come to you and say, well, what happened? You say, well, we, we had telephone wiring that jumped up, but now we have this jumped up. I would like to see, as a member of the public, or see what happened. Telephone wiring jumped up. Next year, it's the same 45,000. For some reason, oh, we increased uh, your new computers, your new systems. Okay, that makes sense. At least it makes sense. Because if next year, there will be a new telephone system again, I'd be asking, like, why are there new system there in place? Right. Because computer hardware is a very generic term. So you can put telephone system, everything is computer system. My watch is computer system. You know, so I would like to see more detailed information. What is mainly computer system? What do you call computer hardware? What is it? That's that's why I'm a little bit interested. I work in that field. I know a little bit. Plus, that's why I kind of picked on this. Like, wait, why? Why? Who? Why do we need this? This and this and things like that. So not 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 saying this is bad or anything, just more information I would appreciate okay. as a member. And, and we can get that to you. And also there are specific things that go in specific lines based on um, the coding that is given to us Correct. as a funder. So you know that kind of information might we can certainly get to you if that's what you want to see. What goes sure. into what is, is charged to those specific Right, right. So what comes under fees? What comes under, you know, um, like you said, computer hardware, computer software? Maybe, maybe not that regular, you know, that would work, okay. you know, like, okay, the tax is more quality. I mean, something, but more descriptive and to you. Know, okay. Like you said, I mean, computer hardware could be anything. Like new telephone system, you say that, that that's not, you know, the new telephone system. Okay. Yep, so we can certainly, you know, get that to you, and we can um, make arrangements to have that more detailed budget. Some of our website, which right. is where most of this other stuff. And Especially right there, because I see there are items like uh, database software maintenance fees. I understand there is a person there that takes care of some sort of software slash hardware slash computer systems. I mean, they can put more details into the website. I don't need to have. This printed down at the end of the X is now the current product system allowing to get information. Like you said, you may probably was available at some point. I mean, they can just put that information there. Right. Do you need to have contact information uh, for them? No, we, we can get your contact information if you want to. Yeah. You wanna, can you grab it, Mark? Right, you're right there. Bring it yourself. If people, no, 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 I just like, can you write it down? You're right there. Yes, we can write it down. Yes. We want to get that contact yes. so we can yes. 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 We should, should I make a comment? Sure. We should know that each month the board receives a detailed uh, revenue and expense report okay. as explained by the presentation. And each month someone reviews all of the charges that go into this report by line item. So we, so, so we, it's not as though we just slapped together a budget and so that we could uh, come up with a zero percent. We did, we did realize, of course, uh, uh, efficiencies this year because the library is closed, sure. right? Um, so there, but there isn't a number that you can associate with that fact, you know, where there are reductions because there was less activity. In a lot of businesses, the, you know, the base expenses went on, but uh, the employees were laid off. So there's a lot of things that go into the month to month 
report does have an opportunity to review, to, to summarize the invoices uh, and the expenses and revenues by line item. Okay. We began reviewing this budget, and we do this every month. We began reviewing this budget the first time we received a copy of the proposal was on January the 13th. So this is something that we generated in the last few weeks. Or, you know, so I want to point that out as well. No, that's that's a question for kids, but again, the superintendent is on the voting and the responsibility of the role, so we have the right. No, I agree. I agree. But, but you see, this this report is a is a level beneath the uh, expenses that are that form the basis for the estimate for the next year. Understood? Yeah. Thank you. And you know, we think of the libraries, the arsenal of democratic culture, and we so appreciate welcoming the comments of the public voices. And this is good, good information for us for the future as well. Where's where? Sorry. You would like to recognize our friend. Let's see, did we have any questions online? Uh, nobody here. Okay. Um, and we track that time. Um, it's 6.43. And before we end our uh, budget session, do you guys have anything additional that you need to ask? Or... I apologize. Anything additional before we close our budget? No, sir. Thanks for coming. So um, at this point, let's close our budget hearing. And all right, six forty three. Um, at this time, I'd like to call to order our regular meeting, meeting uh, six four four, and I'd like to invite you to stand to salute my flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Um, board members received a copy of the April meeting minutes from Martina and Adina. Um, are there any changes, additions, corrections that need to be put? Hearing none, um, you also received an email the next we have any agenda changes that are not here but all right there are no agenda changes we have some reports for our board and sheila um would you like to start there ashley bowser reviewed all invoices and made a recommendation that the board approve the warrant and bill list um the board approves all invoices from april 15th through may 5th 2021 um the board has received a revenue status report and budget status report through the end of April. These reports were distributed electronically. Um, there's been no significant changes in revenues from last month. Um, we reimbursed the school district for our portion of the unemployment fund. Um, the school district is um, seeking reimbursement, partial refunds for those, um, and that's something that they are eligible for because of COVID-19. Um, when that refund is received from the school district, the library will be reimbursed for our portion of that refund. So that's the future. In expenditures, we, con we continue to see uh, significant salary savings, um, a lot of savings in um, fees, consultant fees, postage, supply lines, and our local. Bank statements are available through February 2021 with uh, balance reconciliations from the school district. They have been reviewed by the business office. And that concludes the financial report. Um, board member questions for Sheila. It's, it's great getting the reports ahead of time and being able to review them online. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, <laughs> this is hard. <laughs> 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 this is your 
tidak beli timun ya? Children are camping. We have our uh, signatures for the vote. Uh, most we usually sign them online, but we have to sign them on the Zoom. So they are in that way too. Any additional financial uh, Well, essentially, that's what your signature. No. Nope. So Ashley's Ashley is correct. Ashley makes the motion to approve paying the bill. That's correct. So I need a second. second. It's shifting from Zoom to that. I know. So Ashley makes the motion um, to accept the uh, bills. Uh, we have a second to that motion. Okay. Right. Any discussion on that? All those in favor say aye. Uh, aye. Any opposed? And the motion carries. Um, we'll now move on to the president's report. And um, we have. Um, do you have up here the uh, approach to my staff? Yes, please. Uh, we talked extensively over the past couple of months about uh, an internal standards auditor, um, and Sheila and Martina worked together to create this job description, which we've decided to move forward on. Uh, you probably received it today, or you had a chance to take a look at this. And um, I just would prefer to move to approve and discuss the job description in order to move forward to pursuing uh, getting an individual in that position. Uh, those of you that also attended the trustees workshop, um, you know, this is, this is uh, the recommendation that we move forward. Any comments or suggestions? Did we find out if the person doing it is in line with the I didn't want to go there until we had a job description. And then we can pursue that next step. Okay. Um, and will this require a motion on our part? Will we have so we could make a motion to create the position of claims auditor that reports to the board. And we can take a look at uh, under the tree there, show you the Papers. And Martina did a little research with Sheila, and that is pretty much uh, regionally what is being done for your position. And our next steps, of course, would be to post the position in the candidates and then the board, because the person would be reporting to the board, the board would need to, uh, to do that. Any discussion on this? No, and I'm looking for a motion to uh, create the position of claims auditor. Oh, there's a motion. There's a third one. Do you have a second to the motion? I'll second. Yeah. Thank you, Sharon. Any discussion on this? Hearing none, we'll call the vote. All those in favor? Uh, Aye. And any opposed? And I, I'm not. Hearing Manny, are you seeing any visual? Mm -hmm. Hearing anything? I can see blue lights, but I don't know. But we have a. Uh, oh, I see her. Yeah. A little tiny screen on the laptop up there. It's on the left. Yeah, yeah. I she is. Is there a. I, I, I see a hand up in front. A pen. Okay, thanks. Then I assume that hand was for eye hearing. She can't hear me. Yeah, I don't. Mm -hmm. okay. You should be able to hear her. Her microphone is open. Okay. We have, we have a four in the present. Yes. Yeah. Okay. 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 Four or five. Before we move on, sure. I think that, um, in preparing the draft letter uh, to the uh, Office of Immigration and Control, describing this, the need to do this. I know I received it. Did the did you give that to the board? No. Okay. No, I didn't. I tried to um, talk with the person about the last event. Okay. Yeah. So um, Don and I were we were just hopefully do a, a document to one of the people and the controller that, that we were making a change um, from their client. And so he suggested an excellent letter that they were requesting out the reasons why um, we were doing it. And it it took like the last paragraph of it and I sent it out to the and I'll get back to you on it. Yeah, this, this is a resolution of an issue that started goes back to 2019, uh, where we tried to do what was recommended. Um, and in 
consulted with other schools to come up with other language. Um, so we can have that meeting uh, with this uh, other school in our jurisdiction that would help us in the event that we have a bank in part of the year. Thank you. Thank you. So based on our decision with the planning by year end, because we did not technically have to make a convention neutral in our voucher decision, or the oh the basis of that's my I'm sorry. Please pointed out that our bylaws were not congruent with what we actually do um, from the time of the buy-in. So um, we do need to make an adjustment to the bylaws. You should have just seen this based on that. Um, Take a look at some of the, the verbiage that it has in the bylaws. It, it's really just plain uh, words that we want to make us. I'm waiting to amend the bylaws. Did you make a comment on that motion? I, I would like to suggest that if we could uh, approve the changes, but pending the approval. Review of our attorney to make sure that he's okay with it. Because we have that. The last time the bylaws were updated was in 2019. Mm -hmm. um, and we did have a legal review of that. Um, and, and I just think it would be a good idea. We could, you know, we could have a motion to approve the changes of bylaws pending the approval of the town attorney. Can I accept that as your motion? Yes. Okay. Don't think any motion All those in favor of the motion? State uh, Department of Library Development uh, came out with um, requirements that libraries be open the minimum hours beginning June 1. Uh, our, this minimum hours are based on the population served. So for Liverpool, uh, minimum hours we need to be open um, right now is uh, 55. We are currently open at 50. So we are working with staff on where we're going to add in those extra hours. And so this is the case for every library in New York State. I won't go into any names, but in Onondaga County, it's open your whole pre-COVID hours of this morning. So, so that, that came through, um, and that will be in place um, by June 1. Uh, we're also looking, uh, New York State has uh, increased the capacity limits for office went to 75%. So that impacts our upstairs workspace, uh, which is the uh, office space for staff. So we will be um, looking at the scheduling on how we can bring more of the staff in more regularly um, into the upstairs workspace. Now, that, that begins uh, May 19th, but it's not like a Uh, just today, uh, Susan and I uh, submitted um, an extension for the New York State Highway Construction Grant. This is something they offer every year for grants, um, and particularly this year because of um, the pandemic. Things have kind of, you know, it, it's, it has slowed projects down. Uh, we have everything, obviously, you know, the construction pieces completed. Waiting now on the furniture and the shelving. So, some of that has slowed down just the supply of it. Um, so, our original uh, date of completion was June 30th. 
our suppliers gave us an August date. We built in a little bit extra cushion that we don't think we're going to need, which is um, September 15th. So, and um, just for the board, the grant runs until September 22. Right. But if at this point they, they haven't just filed that, if you aren't done by June 30th, one of them done. Right. But the actual statute is written, you have until September 22. And we expect a good good portion of stuff before June 30th. But as all of you know, lumber has all of a sudden become a big issue. And that might impact like the decks and some things that might take you know, a bit longer. So that was taken care of today. And there's those trailers going to kind of be put in place to stay, I think, to help keep us on track and keep the state informed on where things are. And if anybody needs help, moving the project along the state could all be So that was taken care of today. Uh, the next thing is uh, our bids came in for the mill work in the children's room, and uh, they did come in higher than we expected, and this was primarily because of the increase in cost of lumber. I mean, it is impacting everything. Um, there was something in the paper recently where they said new home construction has gone up, I think, an additional 20000 or something. Uh, just because of lumber, my husband was telling me that some homes are being built with steel two by fours instead of metal two by fours instead of wood because they can still get the house. But anyway, these are the we are hoping for three um, three bids. Uh, we had one uh, decline because they didn't think they could meet meet the timeline. So these are our uh, two bids that came in. It's broken down by the projects in the children's room. Um, so we're asking for uh, board approval to, to go with obviously the, the local uh, the bigger project. So we'll see what the chief can do. And we made a motion <clears throat> to accept the bid one. Yes. Okay, we'll see if we have a motion. Right, yeah, I, you know, I, it, it, it's hard to say why. Um, you know, uh, uh, Suzanne um, from Ashley McGraw said, you know, it, sometimes it just depends on what else they have going on in their facility at the time. They have their, their regular projects that they run through, it's just like the regular run of the mill cabinets and, and then they're in one section and then they have their specialty work and if that shop is particularly busy, you know, their prices might be up for that. Um, I don't know. That to me is a huge difference between a pixel wall and a, and a, I mean, a uh, pixel wall between bid one and, and bid two. So um, what's a pixel wall? It's gonna be a um a, a interactive wall that's kind of divided up the um, the desk in the children's room and the media area where the kids are going to be able to look, manipulate and make little patterns. So everything here is um, interactive, play and learn, um, hands on in the children's room. It'll kind of divide up the different literacy areas and things that can run. So can you enter this last month? I did. Yeah. And then I, I had these are the areas separate from tables and chairs that can make our will if we need to make our children's room very unique. These are things that are not off the shelf. They were designed between our our professor and myself um, to engage in you know our the children in learning and STEM and STEAM activities. Part of the the philosophy. And the first lower bid excludes the painting. We feel that can be done with those. Oh, so they both exclude the paint? Yeah, specifically for the stuff. Right. Um, I think I have the pixel wall for you. Can I see it? Can I see it? Does pixel 
for today's technology to develop for the functionality. So basically, that is the main part of the story. It's more like an analog to the wall. There's no, it's um, it mimics an, an electronic pixel, but it's just, it's analog. Do you, do you have any of those? Yeah, I'm trying to um, call it up for us. Yeah. Um, oh, you know what? Maybe this is what I have to do. Let's try it this way. There you go. Is that the pixel wall? Yes, it is. And thank you. Yeah. It's more of a yin and yang. Right. And then yeah. it has a Yeah. Right. And then that maybe might as well be brush wall, which is brushes and can get easier. So uh, that's the learning ladder. So that will incorporate. Um, uh, talking is teaching tenants, mm -hmm. which uh, will um, help guide uh, parents and caregivers in early literacy um, with their small children. So that I always use the example of you know when you're doing the laundry, you know you can be doing stuff, you know having your children matching the socks by color and, and doing things like that, or when you go to the grocery store how to incorporate language and learning with your children in the grocery store. So as you're going through the aisles, you have them pick out everything they see that's all yellow. And, and sim, sim, things that seem simple to us, but um, you know, some parents, new parents, especially learning these things. So that will all tie in and there will be um, manipulatives and related toys uh, for the children in the border zone. So that will all tie in together. Talking is teaching is something that's pushed throughout on Dyer County through the Early Childhood Alliance, and we need to get it for that. The back side of it is going to be an interactive reading wall, where the children will be able to be creative um, in that area. Kind of going back to that side. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And okay, getting there. Too many windows. All right, we'll get the back. Yes. This is that's the interactive wall. Right. This is the interactive wall where those panels that will will be magnetic, and then we'll have different manipulatives on them that will be changed out periodically. Um, snap, 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 snap. snap. Uh, you can see there's a gear wall. There can be the little poetry magnets. There's all kinds of different things that. Um, the children will be able to um, come in and spend time doing the little bit there. So that's the other part. And then, yeah. All right, so this play area will be in the same area as the learning ladder. And if you've been in any children's museums, a lot of times you will see these in children's museums where they have like a, uh, a little stage or play area and at one time it will be set up like a grocery store where the kids can when they're at the store and checking out groceries and another time they would come in and it'll be set up like a restaurant so the children can play like they're in a restaurant um veterinary office um di different scenarios um for the children to, to play and interact and so that uh, bar at the top would be like a uh movable canopy and then the doors behind it will have the different toys in it, like the plastic fruits and vegetables for like grocery and that kind of thing. So this will all tie into the themes of talking is teaching. Yeah. So everything in this room has been designed very purposefully. Mm -hmm. So yes, it's play, but there's all the evidence that shows that play is the precursor to language development. So everything will tie in. So if the mom's theme is color, Right. There will be toys that are colored, and it could be the grocery store where we highlight the different colored fruits and vegetables. So, this is not just a random here kids play. There's going to be things behind it that the kids won't realize, but the message will also be provided for parents and caregivers and how all this contributes to a language rich environment that is the precursor to literacy. Yeah. 
and programming and yes. here. Yes. And programming and story times and all of that will tie in with the yes. things. Mm -hmm. And our collections, the mm -hmm. collections will be highlighted that keep the theme in the book. Do any of these require the maintenance or are these setups? Maintenance. Uh, other than the cleaning. Sure. Yeah. And, you know, obviously there will be probably at different times of year they'll do inventory to make sure, you know, things are still in usable shape, uh, things of that nature. But as far as, um, you know, when you say there's maintenance of warranty like those times, you know. Kids start twisting it well, I'm sure there'll be something, there'll be some kind of a... There'll probably be a limited warranty from the, the mill workshop. I'm right. Right. Well, I'm saying that maybe, like to your point, if you consider it too big and that, well, you've got to find the work for a while. Right. So these guys are 10 years and those guys are 20 years. Yeah. Well, you know, I care right. about this guy always more. Right. That's the only point. That's it. Where's your refresher? <laughs> 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 that was the, the, the middle way. Yeah. So we never did get a motion. No, we did not. Okay. Yes, thank you. We haven't, but Suzanne at Cash and the Rock and companies that she has worked with and is happy with it. Do you work with those? Um, in one of my past jobs, RV was tasked with a subcontractor to the architect who provided some um, the information desk at a previous location on that, and we didn't have any issues. But these are companies Suzanne picked because they'll do public bids and she thinks they're good work with the quality. And the, the uh, description of what we wanted, the, the, the specs, they're exactly the same for both of them. Oh, yeah. 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 She, same she, type of particle board or whatever, you know, whatever yeah, those kind of Extremely detailed. And they have packaged and all the requirements as far as scheduling and um, substitutions and specs. Yeah, they both the have the materials that. Presumably, the materials for both pieces are exactly the same. Uh, for yes, some reason, yeah. Yeah, they, they, two is T squared is charging more for whatever reason, right. but it should be the exact same materials. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the little workmanship. <laughs> Can I ask a question? They're both, they're, both known, they're both known companies locally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Established in Mary, can we hear your question? I know R.B. Woodcraft's wife really well, so I'm not going to vote, okay? Oh, you're going to abstain? She wants to abstain and vote Yeah, I think she would have to ask. Yeah. 
There is a period of time built into the bid, though, where anyone, any of the vendors who have a question, there's a submittal date where they submit the question. Then the question is made public, not well. It's given to all the vendors with the answer. So everybody has the same information to bid on the project. So if I'm a vendor and I didn't understand something, I can submit a question. When the architect answers it after the submittal date of the question, she sends it to everyone. So everyone has the same information.
did a lot of the background research on what other libraries nationally have done, and we put together a proposal. And our biggest concerns were trying to anticipate what the school district would would want and and think about. And so this is a card that would um, because we're also applying grades for children and teens materials would not have fines. Um, lost or long overdue items would be charged, but the card would not go to the collections. Parents would have the opportunity to opt out at any time through a paper form and the electronic form on our website. And the information that we need from the school district is a file transfer. We are not getting into their computer system or vice versa. And um, we have to look at FERPA laws and the information we only need is child's name, the school building they're in, the address of the school building, and their birthday. So um, I did a little more research and that's called directory information. That is nothing that's actually protected by FERPA. So each year or twice a year, we do a data dump where we get the new information. Um, David worked with OCS to do some tests um, that worked out successfully. So we had a meeting with Kay and Amanda Caldwell, the Director of Middle Education and Humanities. She's got a lot of titles. Yes. <laughs> and um, just to see the, re, you know, would the idea be worthy of moving forward? And she took that information to Dr. Potter, the superintendent, and he said, yes, move forward. We thought we would have a meeting with Dr. Potter, but I think he liked the idea and felt we could move forward. And so, um, Monday, Monday, we met with Dan Versace, the head of IT at the district. Um, luckily, David was here with us because he was moving to Texas at the end of this week. And um, we just went over some of the technical issues. So we are preparing on our end some documents, um, an opt-out form, a memorandum of understanding. Those would come to this board. Um, and we work, memorandum of understanding would have work by Robert Germain, then it will go to um, the school. So we still have more steps, but the fact that um, this was embraced so readily to me just is very exciting to me. Um, and I think we know we're doing it to really work hand in hand with the schools to put our resources very easily in the hands of the school um, students. I know it's a lot of work, and it's like, um, like we will you'll be the first district in the area to do this. And I mentioned it at member council this week with the OCPL and all of our member libraries. So they're very excited that we are kind of paving the way so that the Liverpool is doing it to remain in the next year or so, so we want to share a piece with some of the other people that sit on board with the same class as well. Can I ask a question? Sure. So we're piloting it. Well, it was interesting because me not being a tech person, I was like, should we just do a grade or school? And the, the, only because I was thinking of technical issues. And, you know, the, our two tech people, David and Dan, were like, this is not difficult technically. Like, it's, a, it's, a, it's like an Excel, and then it goes into this TIN file with Polaris, our online. So, but we will test it first. So there might be some testing, but they feel it's it's not of the complication where we have to start small, that we can start at K through 12. I would love to see ourselves in school and both in one program as one of our That was going to be my next question. Yeah. What, are, what is the anticipated time for that? Well, yeah. if, you know, if we could, we would roll it out some time. But <laughs> like, no, let's take baby steps <laughs> and roll it out some time as part of the demonstration. The uh, focus group yes. that actually yes. staff that actually did a lot of research. So, um, the last thing I had was Martina had come up with a great way for the board to <laughs> I guess. So, so um, we are going to give every trustee an LPL address. We figured we don't need an LPL address. <laughs> 
But anyway, we will give you an LPL email address. We will have also an email address that is board president generic that will be redirected to whoever is the board president at the time. So um, you can access, you'll have to log in once and change your password. We can then set that email to redirect to a personal email if you so choose to, I was thinking more of you not needing one more email account to log in. So you can at least then have it forwarded. But the nice thing that comes with giving everybody an address is we can create, well, we have created the Board of Trustees team. So you'll be able to go into the team and um, you'll be able to have discussions. You can have a discussion between one, two, three, all board members. Um, but what'll be nice is I can go and upload all the meeting materials, send you a notice, say the materials are uploaded. And you can log in, look at all the documents. I won't be clogging your email with them. And we'll just start building from there. I can go back and add like all of this year in. Right, as to say, plus you can go back. Yeah. And you'll have that research time and history in the, in the files. So if you want to go back and look, what was that in the board now? I told Mrs. Adams. Yeah. I'm excited. It's going to keep it all very. Information is out. I mean, yeah. This is great. So um, we'll get that information out to you in the next day or so. And, and while that, if you have any problems, please let me know. Is it something that we could use as a, as a board or yep. to communicate with Lena and others? It can be your email. You can email anyone oh, okay. as a trustee. So you could send an email out to Hope Cafe from John Malucci at lpl.org and say, hey, I think it's great. But can John like chat? With yeah, me, you can chat. chat with me, you can chat with Glenna, okay, whoever. Yeah. It's all cool though. It is. <laughs> well, and that's the thing. I mean, it takes your personal email out of it. Right. And it makes it very clean. It's your, you know, we used to have that first class and nobody really used it, but that was kind of the idea that this is going to be so much easier because it is an Outlook email address. And the other thing is um, you can put Outlook Teams on your phone and um, it'll just pop in a message. You can look at the documents on your phone. I look at Teams all the time on my phone. I get now with the right time. I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's going to do the right time to say thank you for sending me all this paper. That's right. That's right. Um, and there is a call feature on Teams. Um, we do team meetings. Uh, you know, on our AWS weeks. Uh, so the four of us in administration, we actually go in and see each other and talk or just have a phone call over the teams. So it's actually very nice. Thank you. And the weather. Yeah. Do we update the website with the LPL email addresses instead of our personal yes. email addresses? Excellent. Yes. Okay. Yes. Did I question today? <laughs> yes, we can. We can. And I would love that. We just have to figure out how to do it. <laughs> so we've already put that in motion to make the change. Right? All right? Yay. Okay. Thank you. And that is all I have, and I do not have any uh, OCPL reports. So I, I just had a quick question about OCPL. Have they gotten back to full hours or full staff? They are at their minimum out of the back. I think full staff, almost, there's still a few furloughs people that when that's kind of bringing them back in. Lunches. I think most, but not yeah. all. Yeah. But, and, but they're not open their pre COVID hours or not. I think everybody did their pre COVID hours. But all their buildings are open all day. So you're not going to know every other branch every other day. Okay. So I think, and I think they've opened all three floors of the central office. So you can get some of those just three of them open all the time. And that is also what the transportation is working. Uh, we are getting our delivery as of this week. We were, are back to five days a week of delivery, which is huge for us. Um, that's going to help immensely. So that issue has, has improved. Um, interlibrary loan is coming back on a very limited basis. Uh, we are still doing some cataloging for some of the So there's a way back. 
I think what's happening downtown is it brought people back in an effort to get the delivery back up to five days a week for most of the libraries. They've um, repositioned some of the staff to go down in the store and they're only rotating in and out. So some of these other services have kind of had to take a back seat, but they're, they're slowly getting back up. Okay. Uh, we have some items for action and discussion. Um, we have a personnel change. Um, I have a motion to accept the personnel change as presented. So moved. John and Second. Second. Thank you, Second. John. Um, any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any time on the map to any area? The motion carries. The second is the privacy policy, and this is a second reading and final approval. And we see there is a second reader. So moved. John and second. Second. Action. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, the next is the surplus furniture and equipment policy for second reading and final approval. And thank you, John. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you, Brett. Any discussion? Hearing none, call the vote. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? And the motion carries. And we are the chair of the bylaws. I'm going to bear our signature report to the agenda. Yeah. And we now have um, an open forum. Anybody has anything else to say? Yes, sure. Open forum. Okay, how about board forum? Are you going to make a speech? <laughs> <laughs> and well, I think that would be nice I think for so. us to. I actually have a speech. Well, you have a speech? I do. <laughs> well, for the visitors, this is my last board meeting. Um, I chose not to run for re election. Um, much to our dismay. Yes, uh, for another, what, seven years? Seven years. Seven years yes. since I'm on our board. So, as board president, but but seeing you as my mentor, um, when I found out today this was going to be your last meeting, um, I thought of Leo Tolstoy, and because he's a writer and a philosopher, but one of his short stories was three questions. And those of you who have been at work for a while know that John likes to ask questions, and <laughs> I've learned so much from his ability to question. And um, Leo Tolstoy said there are three important questions in life. One. Is it really? <laughs> Number one, they want to know uh, when is the best time to be here. The second question is, who is the most important one? And three is, what is the right thing to do? And Don has truly modeled that as a trustee. He has shown compassion. He's engaged us in the moment to looking at the impact of our decisions that we make right now, what they will have for impact we'll have down the road. He's emphasized that time is important, that we really take time to think about it and we never waste our time as a board um, thinking about things that, that, that are not significant to our community that make an impact on our community. Um, you always, always do good for others. You are always thinking about the taxpayer and the impact that will lead to right here, the decisions we make. Um, you always encourage us to be fiscally responsible. Um, and um, that I, I can't thank you enough for not just being a board member, but being, being a tutor, a mentor, and a guide, but truly a philosopher like the old Tolstoy. So I missed your questions. And um, I personally would like to ask you that um, I'm going to keep your phone number and my cell phone and call you. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Thank you. I, I, because you really, um, you do help the board be a better board. And uh, we really appreciate that. So, 
以后也很爱自己成为。